Hello, friends. Hello. Hi. Welcome to a, a new edition of the Cinemondo podcast. Today we're going to talk about um, a filmmaker we just lost, sadly. Yeah. Someone who really made sad. some amazing films from the, from the time when I was young enough to just be starting to get into movies. His yeah. name that always came up. Richard Donner. Yeah. Um, and I think the July first... 5th. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, 91 years old, and uh, he started in television. You know, he did pretty much every TV show known to <laughs> known yeah. to the <laughs> he in did the 50s uh, until uh, he started doing features in the 70s, and that's when yeah. we really got to know who he yeah. was. I think I first became aware of his name as a director and him as a director with the Superman movie, which came out when I was a kid, and you know, I was think I was the perfect age for it. And I already love superheroes. I was always into it. And you'd see superhero movies before that. There were attempts <laughs> at superhero <laughs> movies or TV yes. series or whatever, you know. Yeah. And they cartoons just, and things. And they yeah, just, they're like, I, I was into comics. And every time I'd see something like that, I'm like, you know, they missed the point. They didn't get the, they didn't get the spirit of the idea. And that movie got the spirit of the idea i felt like wow i'm seeing a movie by somebody who understands comic books yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah it was before that it was a spider-man tv shows and all yeah. the you know, terrible captain america stuff and it was just you know, it, it, didn't, it didn't get it get the flavor of a comic book but just when superman started the movie it just felt huge big you know great yeah. john williams score yeah it was just marlon and, and brando very epic and he just yeah. has this sort of really commercial gloss it's yes. very very candy coated with blue skies and you know just great colors and open vistas and you know he just has a very friendly sort of type of filmmaking yeah. even when he's doing something scary like the omen which i'm still shocked he did that like yeah for some reason in my head when i'm like oh yeah richard donner what did he direct the omen like i'm always kind of surprised <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. you know, he did like Lethal Weapon, also a big glossy, you know, he's really great at that. And it's so he can he can mix the violence and the humor really well. And he was really you know one of those guys that really set a tone. Very almost Spielbergian in that yeah, way. Like absolutely. it's very friendly, yeah. funny characters that get in trouble. <laughs> well, like the, the early scenes, you know, in Superman uh, when he's younger on the plane, the plains of Kansas. Yeah. I remember those just really captured what i uh, thought an uh, east coast guy what the midwest was like you know yeah yeah those cornfields and, corn and the barn and so yeah. glenn ford you know glenn ford yeah. is his dad like what great casting he was so right. believable so yeah. good we have yeah. a clip and right the um the omen um i think defined a style of horror films that went from that point you know there there was a mm -hmm. there was a serious edge to that film you know gregory peck and lee remick and you know some pretty heavy heavy actors in that film and at that time i don't think um serious you know quote serious actors did horror films and there right. you got gregory peck doing a a horror film that was a get yeah so and that yeah and that's when i think they sort of became a little bit legit you know mm -hmm. some people think it might have been the exorcist but you know with lee <laughs> j cobb and you know all the people that were in that film but the omen had it you know had that feel well the too. omen you know you think about the exorcist i could see why maybe some people it would think it as even more horrific because it was more gory and yeah. more disturbing but the omen brought some gore i mean that one True. scene the decapitation scene was Ugh, stunning yeah. like when that happened i couldn't believe it because I, yeah you really love that character or did not see that coming and when that right. happened it was just devastating and it was so beautifully staged and weird the way they did it I was uh, so he can bring it when he wants to. <laughs> and it just, I mean, the writing in that was was yeah. excellent too. But the idea, you know, that he would show that, you know, that was a like you said, that was shocking. Now yeah. it's like you see it all the time. But but back then it was, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. However old I was, I was a tiny kid. I snuck, I had to sneak in mm -hmm. to see this movie. But I I had to see it. I had yeah, to see it. it. Came in, it came out in seventy six. So and it holds up. 
it yeah, holds up. Holds and up. It was a big budget Beautiful. film with a lot yeah. of with with gory scenes like that. It was yeah, yeah. It was quite Beautiful. shocking. Do you want Gregory to, do you Peck want to, with Gregory Peck and Lee Remick and David Warner? I mean, a huge cast. Do you want to go back and talk about his uh, TV stuff first? Yeah. Or? Oh yeah, yes. let's start from the beginning with Richard Donner. We did yeah. a little quick overview of his movies, but we'll go back a little further as he started out as a young man directing TV. <laughs> well, he did pretty much any show. I mean, <laughs> Basically actually, every show from the yeah, 70s. I mean, Gilligan's Island, 60s. The Rifleman. I mean, uh, all kinds of things. Uh, yeah. But one of them was he did one of the very memorable Twilight Zone episodes oh, from 1964 with yeah. William Shatner called Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, and which of course was redone... Um, you know, by George Miller with John Lithgow. Mm -hmm. We talked about that in the previous fa uh, favorite yeah. uh, scenes episode. That was one of your so, favorite scenes. Yeah. I love that scene. I love it. So, um, but we have a clip from that, don't we, Burke? Should we show it? Let's show it. Yeah. Let's take a look. <laughs> I want to see it. Here we go. I'm sorry, Dan. Go back to sleep. Shouldn't have taken that sleeping pill. I should stay awake with you. No, no, no. I don't want you to, sweetheart. Go back to sleep. I'm all right. Can't you sleep? I will. Don't worry about me. How young he is. Yeah. <laughs> just don't look out the window. Don't. Just don't. <laughs> Pull back that curtain. Pays off. They shot this all in a day and a half. Wow. Yeah, so they... Look at that. It's such a great reveal. And it's like... What? Can you imagine watching this back then? Yeah. Okay. I think of it every time I'm on oh, a plane. Yeah, me too. What am I seeing? It's worth waking her up for this, seriously. Yeah, but he's like, am I seeing this? or? I would want her to confirm. Your brain has to process it, you know? Right. And he just came out of a sanitarium like right. or something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can There's a man out there. What? <laughs> Look, he's crawling on what? Damn it. They always do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. M must have been the Bob? What is it? <laughs> oh, it's nothing, Mrs. Wilson. Can I get you anything? A sedative? A glass of water. <laughs> Surely. Like an anti hallucinogen <laughs> or something? <laughs> Off this plane, ASAP. yeah. No, I, I thought I saw something parachute. <laughs> what? Nothing. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so good. Wow. Yeah. That it, the the thing about that episode that you can't you can't overlook the fact that that costume is sort of dorky. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the big the, fluffy, cute... the big fluffy fur suit and the and the weird sort of face on it you know it's, he, it's, it's he, he's wa he's walking like it's a side you know there's no sort of wind feel he's just sort right of like, you know, trudging along but that makes it kind of weird but in a way you're that. right it does make it kind of weird it's almost like a big fuzzy teddy bear is out there on the wing and it doesn't look like what you know in the uh, remake one it really was scary creature like a gar like what you'd imagine a gargoyle or a gremlin, gremlin. or whatever they yeah. called them you know yeah. would look like but I think that one, what it made it more so that you wouldn't want to believe it. And that's almost funny. So you're kind of like, uh, oh, uh, cause if you don't really feel super threatened yet, because it's kind of cute and weird and you're like, this isn't wait, what? Like, right. And, and it's because it was just in that monk suit out there. Yeah, on the just ahead of that line of being scary. You're like, uh, I need sleep. <laughs> but yeah, in a way that it's, it, I remember the first time I saw that late night television as a kid, when I discovered, you know the twilight zone and what the twilight yeah. zone was I, I i remember i had i felt like this this is my world right here this yeah, is i'm going to love this show for the rest of my life oh, and it that's what i want. And it inspired me to do twilight what i do zone. and that's richard Matheson, who we've talked about before yeah. and he's just he is the greatest when it's like imagine 
you're on a plane yeah. you're on, and you look mm-hmm. out and you see something fooling around with the engine on the plane and nobody he plays. always does the That's iconic great... episodes <laughs> or the iconic thing like anytime there's entertainment you're like oh that was a great show it's always worth the man richard matheson <laughs> yeah every time yeah he just knows how richard to matheson plus yeah. richard donner yeah. and so and william shatner you know william shatner. Gotta, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and rod serling you know <laughs> the production oh of the of that story and it's a little half hour short story that yeah. takes place, I think, entirely on the airplane. There's a couple of, right. there's yep. a, a second, you know, before and after, but it's mm-hmm. mostly carried by William Shatner, you yeah. know, that story and, and the idea. It's the idea, the weird idea, and William Shatner and the brilliant direction, like that push, that real, you know, that camera pushes in on his face and you're like, you know, what the hell am I seeing? I love that. <laughs> I love that episode. Really fun. Too. Too. Super fun. So and he did a lot that... of other stuff like Wild Wild West, Kojak, like all these things people still have heard of. You know, he's done a lot of TV stuff. Yeah, absolutely. All those reruns yeah. that we all grew up with. And with all that TV, uh, you know, he finally got his ability to do a feature. And one of the first ones was The Omen. Knocks yeah. it out of the park with his first film. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, it's still there. It's still a classic. It's not one of those movies that came and went. It's just like... People still, still considered... reference it, oh, so and good. it's also still not just as a as a reference um, in terms of great horror films. And whenever great horror films, people start listing them and coming up with their favorites. It's always mm-hmm. on the list. Always, yeah. even though it was made three thousand years ago, it was. <laughs> it's a. It's a. So it good. sticks in your mind it because it's so beautifully directed and staged and acted yeah. and and it had that that gravitas and that class it, mm-hmm. it's a it's a classy 70s horror film and yeah. you know, made for grown-ups you know yeah. it's not like yeah. to make teenagers scream and laugh in the audience this is to make you think and to make you go home haunted you know and the, like we've said and, the, and the music is so like yeah. you just you, you yeah. just it's in your head that music from the and yeah. damien's look and everything so let's uh, let's see a clip from that so we see yeah. a clip yeah. yeah let's let's check out a clip let's check it And Lee Remick, so yeah. great. No, that's just a terrible place for a plant. <laughs> and another push in, another camera yeah. push in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she had a very interesting face. This actor, act- yeah. actress. Yeah. Music. <laughs> Love that music. Something is afoot. How do you make a little kid on a tricycle creepy? Yeah. This is how you do it. <laughs> and just the cutting back and forth. You don't, like, mm-hmm. you're, first time you see this, you're like, why are we cutting back and forth to mom out on the landing, you know? <laughs> little boy on his tricycle. That low angle. <laughs> Release the hounds. <laughs> the yeah. music stops, which is great. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, you just hear just... squeak, squeak, squeak. Yeah. Oh, so good. And now you know those two uh, yeah. segments. <laughs> yeah, this is where they intersect. shot it's a cool fall too yeah shot mm. that. very they did very, had to do very, a big rig for her yeah it reminds me of like a hitchcock fall yeah kind of like in the uh, yeah oh so i also really like the the delay when she falls and she's hanging there's that long moment of like she knows she's gonna fall and yeah, what that's gonna feel like, and she, and oh, it's just ugh, so painful and, and, the and so well staged and very looking. cinematic with the goldfish bowl yeah. crashing. Yeah, and then, so like, you got a little precursor. This is yes. what this is gonna, yeah. <laughs> this is gonna happen. This is how this far moment. down it is, and yeah, yeah. Uh, 
There's a lot of Hitchcock in that movie to me. I mm-hmm. think it's on our yeah. Scene, you know, in, in certain scenes. Yeah, like, you're right. It's is that my name Arbogast in the Psycho, kind of falling down the stairs in sort of mm-hmm. this weird sort of, you know, it, it's not realistic but a very cinematic fall. It's yeah. so. it's almost implying is how how it might have felt for her. You know, like right. that. You know, when you right. have a situation like that, it seems like it lasts for. You know, like if you're ever you know knock wood mm-hmm. in an accident or something, it always feels like time slows Slow down, down yeah. right right and there was a lot of fear like i like that it wasn't just a simple like possessed by a demon or satan right. or whatever it was like there were a lot of fears about like parents what if your kid isn't you know fitting in what if there are problems with your child how scary right. that is what you know what do you do as a parent without wanting to blame your child for right. anything even yeah. if they end up being the antichrist, which is <laughs> spoiler yeah. alert. Like actually being the antichrist. <laughs> you should be very afraid of your children. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I loved how there were a bunch of different fears going on in this. And so you could build on it and relate to it on so many different levels. It was and yeah. just so beautifully gothic. Like the other great scene where there's the party going on and the the nanny or the housekeeper yeah. is standing in the window and the dogs are you know the the great Wattweiler scene where we're all staring. And she yeah. jumps off. Oh, it's like just so, so many great stunts. Like, you know, oh, it's great stuff. And cla- yeah. just classic iconic imagery, you mm-hmm. know, like you were saying, the goldfish bowl. I think yeah. that may, I don't know, it, it, it's reminiscent of the, the snow globe in Citizen Kane. Yeah, yeah. But, but the idea of something like that being, like you said, a portent of doom, you know, like here's, yeah. here's the first thing that fell. This is what's going to happen to her. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you're going to break. That's a clever device to yeah, use in is. storytelling. You know? And you think that's the worst thing that's going to happen to her. Right. <laughs> and, and, and Donner knows how to work with actors. And he, Gregory yeah. Peck is great. In, and both and Gregory Peck is yeah. great in this. His, yeah. his sort of struggle and his, you know. Yeah. He doesn't want to believe that his boy yeah. could possibly do this or be at the yeah. root of all evil. And have, you know, the, but you see the three sixes on his scalp. And I remember yeah. seeing that. Oh, going, Holy that was crazy Christ, too. That was creepy. Yeah. Wow. So so. And the fact that he has to do such a horrible thing to his own little boy, yes, you know, right, and, he, right. and he knows it's horrible. And it basically, like, you know, I have to do that. I have to save the world. And the, he, Gregory Peck just adds so much to this film. Mm-hmm. Lee Remick, yeah. too. And, right. the, and the rest of the cast, you know, Dave, it wasn't David Warner. David Warner. Yeah, yeah. he was and, great. Um, but Gregory Peck, especially, I think, because he he sort of has to carry the 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 drama and the realization. He's the audience, you know. He's the eye of the audience, yeah. yeah. Who sees the um, the who sees what happened and what is it? Uh, Bugenhagen and the guys that find the yes. the fact that his yeah. child was replaced and the child was born of a uh, of a jackal and they dig up this the grave of the mother and it's a dog scene. skeleton, you know. Yeah. And, it's just Gregory Peck's face during all this as it's all yeah. coming together for him. And that it's, it's a, it is a movie that holds up. Like you said, I saw and it's I, like I, jaws. Like you can't, you can't top it. Like, yeah, I've seen a lot of possession movies, a lot of, you know, kind of along the similar line. This movie is one of those perfect. You can't make it better. You can't remake it and make it better. You can't even touch it. And even, you know, beyond that, like the conjuring trying to do it, they right. can't, you can't, just well, they made a, They redid. They remade an o, the Omen. Yes, I they, know they did. And can you remember it? <laughs> no. Even the sequels. No. Yeah. They yeah, weren't no. terrible, but the, I mean, this movie is just like just so like it, it's iconic. Also- it's also yeah. a big movie. Like there's yeah. a lot of yeah. you know, locations, a lot of sets. Yeah. It feels like you see everything on the screen. A lot of horror movies are much more contained, smaller because of budget. But this was like, there's a lot there. So that's yeah. adds to it. Yeah. And I miss the idea of horror movies that were made yeah. for adults. Yeah. You know, that yeah. aren't made for like the screamy, like, you know, yeah. let's make the kids freak out and jump scares and blood and gore and splatter and all that. It's like, yeah. I guess that has its place in pop culture and all, but this this is this mm-hmm. movie was a serious film made in the with the techniques of a serious film. Yeah. There are some present day horror filmmakers who are doing that kind of thing, but Ari um, Aster. yeah, that's no, that's yeah. yeah. I think Part of Two is like it's one of those films that's so big and so epic and so a list yeah. that it could almost be scary enough without even the Antichrist part in it. Like yeah. you, it's that's when you know you have a good movie is when the supernatural part of it is almost secondary where you care about yeah. the characters, you care about the mystery, you care about all the current paranoia and the conspiracies. 
And then that almost seems like an afterthought in a way, like yeah. the reveal. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah okay, I get it. <laughs> you could say that again about The Exorcist. You know, it, yes. it's you could have yeah. taken out all that other stuff mm -hmm. and had it just be a story about a mom who was having trouble with her daughter yeah. and a priest who was having doubts about his his vocation you know those big 70s like the exorcist the omen mm -hmm. the shining and there are others yeah. it's a really family drama and that's what hereditary is yeah. as opposed yeah. to like something like it or the conjuring which is just you know, <laughs> special effects and it's just it's just missing the point it's missing the family drama or the drama that really gets you you know invested in the characters and the horror yeah. of it. so and real yeah. grown-up families yeah. You know, yeah like a family yeah. of adults right. you know and they're not well, scary, you know, scary layers, like, like yeah. you're saying that they're scary of the Antichrist. They're scary of the having a child who is, is in trouble and needs help. There's the scary of, you know, who can you trust? The scary, did, yeah. the, did these big institutions fail everyone to do something super creepy, like the Catholic church switching out babies? Like, right, like right. that's just creepy and scary on its yeah. own. It's not like this one single idea that's just like, oh, there's a possessed child. And that's that's all we're really going to say about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's a lot more going on. I think that's yes. why it really, really holds yes. up. Agreed. I think I'm going to watch it again. Very yeah, me soon. too. And I'm going to watch it again. <laughs> I haven't seen it in a while. So that's, I, I think I'll have so my good. daughter watch it with me. So good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next, a few years later, Later, he came out with Superman, 1978. Yeah, this was a huge film. Yeah, you know, talk huge. about event movie. Yes. That was an it event was, film it for was sure. Years, so years in making. There was a lot of stops and starts. Mario Puzo, who wrote mm -hmm. The Godfather, yeah. wrote you know co-wrote the script. Mm -hmm. uh, you had Marlon Brando in it in the beginning, and then but was what makes the movie to me is not is the way Donna directs it, but Christopher Reeve, yeah, and Margot Kidder are perfect. Yeah, as Clark Kent and Lois Lane, I don't think they've been topped. Yeah, yeah and they were so of their time too. Margot Kidder was the, you know, she was such a plucky, you know, strong, mm -hmm. free spirit kind of a person. Yeah. And she wasn't. I mean, she was the damsel in distress a couple of times in the film, but she was more than that. You know, she had more going for her than yeah, that. She was capable. Yeah. So and Strong he knew character. that about you could tell that right. superman could see that in her and that's what attracted him to her mm -hmm. but and yeah it, i mean the movie is so rich that's another film that's just rich in things yeah. it, there's parts of it that i have to say go a little bit overboard with the with the broad comedy you know ned Beatty, who i i love <laughs> and uh, that whole those characters the, the lex luther stuff is i think the weakest part of the yeah. film yeah, yeah I, I think that stuff is a little hokey um, he's almost but, comedy relief he's so bad he, he yeah is, yeah but, but i mean it doesn't ruin the movie but it, no. it's one of those like ah, it would be better if they did a little more work on that but I, I thought love, the funniest part was just the fact that christopher reeve who's who's so stunning and perfect and this huge muscular man and he puts on the glasses <laughs> no one recognizes yeah. him it's like and it's kind of a joke that no one would recognize like yeah. Superman. Yes. But with Christopher Reeve as Superman, you just, there's no, come on. <laughs> but his personality, I mean, he went from being, you know, he, he, Superman like this. And then when he put on the glasses, he also changed his stature. And he's like, oh, gee, hi, Miss Lane. It wasn't you know, enough. <laughs> yeah, I know. But <laughs> yeah, but it was very cute. It was but very he cute. tried. He tried. He and he's very funny in this. He's very yeah. funny. And that's the thing. The humor is so great. Oh, it's great. He's so likable. And so is yeah. Margot Kidder. You just yeah. love Mar Everybody fell in love with Margot Kidder. Yeah. And, and yeah. So that makes the movie. It's the love story that really sort of makes it, you know, plus yeah. the big. big. So yeah. let's see a clip from uh, Superman 1978. This is a scene from earlier in the film, but it's kind of like the classic superhero scene, you know, gotcha. is a fun, a fun, uh, intro, kind of an introduction to Superman, I think. Okay. Really nice guy. Jimmy Olsen is fantastic. Hey, huh? there's those glasses. Ah, come on, come on, yeah. come on. Get in here. Hurry up. Come on. Clark, Gets in front of her. Out of here. I, I think you better do what he says, Lois. Come on, come on. <laughs> get in here, quick. Don't, don't, don't come on. Come on. And John Williams did the score, right? Yeah. Did he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the classic. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Hold it there. Just a minute, Mister. Just a minute. Now I realize, of course, that times are tough for some these days, but this isn't the answer. You can't solve uh, society's problems with a gun. You know something, buddy? You're right. I'm gonna turn over a new leaf. Good for you, sir. That's the spirit. See, he doesn't really want to hurt anybody. Uh huh. Right after I rip off this lady's purse. <laughs> of course. Now come on, lady, hand it over. I don't know. I just think maybe you better. Hmm? 
<laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so she's a badass. <laughs> she almost got herself killed too. Yeah. If he wasn't bulletproof. <laughs> yeah. You catch that ball. Oh, he just fainted. <laughs> what happened? Well, I guess I must have fainted. Fainted? <laughs> you fainted. I'm sorry. Loser. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea that he had to make himself out to be this jerky <laughs> coward guy. Yeah. Supposing that man has shot you. Is it worth risking your life over ten dollars, two credit cards, a hairbrush, and a lipstick? <laughs> you just described the exact contents of my purse. <laughs> Most women have way more than that in their purse. Yeah. Wild guess. <laughs> <laughs> Taxi. Uh. Yeah, that that She's captures so the essence of yeah. the, of their relationship. Yeah. yeah. So cute. Okay, how do we end? <laughs> you turn <laughs> okay. up this volume. <laughs> but it's, it was a big movie. I remember, like, you know, uh, Star Wars came out the year before in 77. Yeah. That was huge. And then 70, 78 was the year of Superman. And I remember yeah. just the opening credits. Have you ever chance to see the opening credits of this, you know, on YouTube? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. just great. It's just like, boy, it's like this. We were seeing a real movie. The music. Yeah, get ready for something yeah. huge. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I love that. And it really yeah. felt huge. Like, I, I don't know if you really get that feeling anymore. Well, I mean, maybe it has to do with the fact that movies were a lot harder to see back yes. then. You had to go to theaters. If you saw them on TV, it kind of sucked because they were chopped and their TV was teeny. The VHS, and yeah. Terrible. And then you had the VHS later. Yeah, it's like, it just isn't the same. And so when those came out, it's like, that's your one shot. So it became yeah. this big event to see that. And it, you yeah. had to see it on the big screen. Now I make this distinction of like, is it a big screen movie or a watch at home movie? Should I go to yeah. the theater to see it? And it still is measured against mostly these big, you know, big spectacle movies like this. Like this is a movie I would have seen in theater, you know, regardless, you know, mm -hmm. but it just, it, I kind of miss that feeling of this sort of epic sort of, I don't know. There's some kind of it innocence about it. It was the early days of the fandom kind of mm -hmm. thing, you know, where, you, where there were people who, who were super fans of this film and mm -hmm. like with star Wars, you know, it was the yeah. same kind of thing. It was a really a time of great bounty for, for films. You know, there were so many films coming out at that time that were huge. There was a lot of garbage too. There was a lot of rip off garbage, yeah. you know, like, yeah. like cheesy star Wars rip offs and things that, we of course would go see, and we're like, "All right, you know." Ten minutes <laughs> in, you're like, it. "Star <laughs> Crash." <laughs> yeah, Star Crash is the is the big one. Just put some letters remember. around. Yeah, yeah, just put a different word instead of wars. Star, Star Crash. What could we say? Starship and troopers. Star battles. I mean, Starship <laughs> invasions. Yeah, there was all kinds of. Yeah. Kind of yeah. But I think, um, for me, it's also the fact that before that you you know if you're a comic book fan and the superheroes they just they were they movies weren't made for superheroes so as Burke said right. earlier this was the first like yeah. superhero movie you see the comics come to life somewhat you know? we can blame time, Richard given... Donner for this yeah. onslaught of non-stop comic book movies now <laughs> yeah which I personally love I really with. like them too but come on <laughs> if they're done right you know I yeah. like Deadpool he's funny yeah. um <laughs> no. But yeah, it was it was a great it was a great start. It it and it wasn't just for comic book fans. I think that's why it worked. You know, yeah. they filled it out so that even if you didn't like comic books, you would like this movie. And Superman's he's a classic, you know. Yeah. I mean, who doesn't yeah. love Superman? Yeah. Well, the other thing about Superman that's always been a problem with the character for me in the comic books and in the movies, he was never a favorite character of mine. Um I read the comic books when I was a kid, but I wasn't I, I was more of a Marvel kid because the Marvel characters had more depth and, you know, they had yeah. fail. They failed and they they had li you know, real real lives and issues and things. But Superman was a perfect man. And I think in some ways he was like a god, like Superman and Wonder Woman were 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 like gods. Mm -hmm. And whereas in the Marvel universe, we have Thor, who who is a god, sort of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he had um, he had problems too, and he had there were things that could stop him. There were people who were more powerful than him. But Superman, 
It's like, and, and one of the problems that people talk about a lot with this movie is the fact that he had too much power. And even when, when a, you know, a beloved character, Lois Lane dies, he is able to turn back time and bring her back. And it almost, I remember thinking, Oh no, that kind of, why doesn't he just go back a little bit more and stop Lex Luthor from doing the whole thing that caused all this death and destruction? And why just go back enough to save Lois Lane? There's a whole bunch of people that died in that flood. And, you know, right, right. well, it and, becomes that whole paradox, right? Yeah. You, know, you can't change him if something worse might happen. But, you know, still, you, you want to at least explain. <laughs> I feel like the time, tra time travel thing was a little bit of a, um, that was a miss. That was the one misstep in the film, I think, for me. Well, I think there are a lot of, I mean, I think there's a lot of problems. There was a lot of, there was a chance that this was going to be a disaster. Like there's yeah. a lot of talk. This is going to be a bomb. You know, there, there's a lot of delays. You know, Marlon Brando walks off the set. He wants to, you know, yeah. $10 million for 20 minutes worth of when work. When does he not do that? You know, yeah. all, all, I remember this going, this movie is going to be a dog, you know? Yeah. And somehow Richard Donner saved it because the good points of it outweigh the yeah. negative stuff. I agree with you about the turning back time stuff. Yeah. Lex Luthor, Gene Hackman, all that stuff doesn't work. But it still didn't take away from the bigness yeah. and the joy of the film. Yeah, so, I still love the movie. Reed. Yeah, yeah. 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 Christopher Reeve was so great. He's so yeah. personable, so likable. Yeah. You were squarely in his camp the entire time, and he was just—he was relatable for a person who's yeah. supposed to be God and supposed to be like you know almost indestructible. It's like you still felt like he was this really cool kind of dude. Incredible, <laughs> like, incredible, very character. personable. He yeah. carries it. Yeah, first, yeah. first movie, so great. Total unknown. You know. He, yeah, he was a total unknown. Yeah. And, you know, just, Margot like, Kidder was kind of not you know she wasn't a star in, at that point in the De Palma movie maybe she was in Sisters yeah. and some other things yeah. you know, for sure but yeah she wasn't like and also I think there was a little controversy that you know that she was cast because she wasn't like pretty enough she wasn't like a star she was kind of quirky but I think that made it work because you you believed her as this strong kind of you know professional working woman right and it wasn't just it didn't feel like a put on you know you, right. you really believed in these characters Agreed. so I thought she it was, was great. beautiful <laughs> I did not but that's okay you know <laughs> Well, I worked with it, her years. Uh, she's know, great, years, though. I do love ago. her. Yeah, she yeah, was she's really fun. interesting. Interesting person to work with. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> she so, seems very cool. The, yeah. You know, Twilight Zone, The Omen, Superman. I mean, he's done a lot of other things. But the next and one there's even more came out in 1985. <laughs> oh, there's even more. Yes, this is a film that was geared towards kids, and I wasn't a kid when this came out, so this wasn't geared towards me, and therefore I don't right. have the affection for this film that other people do. But that's that's just my personal thing. It seemed thing. like they were really trying to tap into a Spielberg universe yeah. with this. And that's where, you know, again, I was the same thing. Like, I, it wasn't really my thing. It felt like it was sort of, it was a Stephen King uh, Spielberg film without the scares, you know? So I just was like not interested. But or a Indiana lot of people Jones love it. With kids, you know, Indiana yeah, Jones with kids. Yeah. But yeah. it was, to me, it was just so loud and noisy and all. There was not one character in there that I liked. It was yeah. just... So let's show a clip of this movie we all don't like. <laughs> yeah. but a lot of people love this movie. They so do. Maybe, maybe I yeah. need to reassess. I haven't seen it in a long Didn't time. Spielberg produce it? I think he's... Yes. Maybe. Scene. I knew I there was Spielberg was, in there he's somewhere. He's in there somewhere, but, yeah. Yeah, but you can tell it doesn't... I, I have a feeling that if he had directed it, he probably would have had the the cast might have been a little bit more likable, and maybe that Richard Donner just didn't really do kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. He didn't because his movies. The only other kid I can think of is Damien in The Omen, and you know he's. He was evil. <laughs> he, was, he was more likable than the Goonies. He was yeah. more like he was. Yeah, I like him more than I like any. Any Christ is more likable than the Goonies. Yeah, just obnoxious that's, brats. That's the quote. That's the quote <laughs> of the just, podcast. Guys. Just doing his job. <laughs> All right, let's see a scene from the Goonies. Let's reassess them just from the short clip. Let's, let's see, see how we like, we like this clip. All right, let's Here check we go. it. All right. Oh my God, I hate him already. <laughs> You got Sean Astin, you got yeah. Corey Feldman. Oh, yeah. oh, shit. Come on, guys. This is our time. And gosh, uh, Thanos is in this. Wow. That's right. As myself. Yeah. <laughs> Stupid girls. <laughs> Martha Plimpton. Oh my gosh. Young uh, 
about it. I was born with it. <laughs> <laughs> Young Thanos. Anyway, here's me. Uh, Josh Brown. You know, tilting the mirror so he could look down my shirt. Just so I elbowed his lip. <laughs> you elbowed his lip? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Wait a minute, Chunk. You know, I got some naked pictures of your mom. Taking a bath. You want to buy him? What? Real. <laughs> <laughs> The muscle. Ah, oh, chunk. Oh, that guy. He falls for it every time. <laughs> so 1980s. Holy. Yeah. We've got to get to the lowest point of the floor. Lowest point, nothing, Mike. Let's go now. They did that, but didn't hit themselves in the face. Yeah. Right. You didn't slap him across the face with a fish. <laughs> Can't even turn on a light in this movie without it being a big production. Big trap. <laughs> Do not watch this movie if you have a migraine. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> How old are these girls supposed to be? Okay, I know, yeah. I don't know. Be 12, but it seems know, dicey, 17. man. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But the production design is beautiful, of course. It's well done. The idea is fun, you know? Like, how fun yeah. would it be to be a kid and find yeah. buried this treasure? Is always my dream of the big discovery. Like, yeah. yeah. So cool. Want to see it? This clip keeps going. Let me know if you want me to. We can end it. End well, out of this I guess we're going to see what's at the end of the hall, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is a long clip. <laughs> Did I load up the whole movie? <laughs> let's, just, let's just watch the whole movie. <laughs> I just want to see if there's a creature design. I don't remember this scene. Yeah, it's a creature it? design. Okay. Yeah, it's that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ah! Oh, <laughs> wow. Really? <laughs> Are people forgetting they just saw a monster chain do all? I, mean, I know. Yeah. 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 Who gives a shit about this? Yeah. Hmm. It's a movie. Um, okay. It's a, it's a movie for kids. I think. Yeah. Oh, you know, with kids' attention span, and really, really and she she kisses him, and then when they get out in the into the light, she's like, "Wait a minute, you're not Matt Dillon." <laughs> <laughs> be like, my career is gonna be more esteemed. <laughs> yeah. Stick with me. <laughs> so that you know, there's a lot of banging, a lot of yelling, a lot of screaming, mm -hmm. a lot of yammering. You know, and what I, were I remember, they trying to capitalize on with this movie? Because I know it was I sort of a. It was a sort of stand by me without the grimness. I mean, I can't remember what, why, why was, they would make this. I think it was Indiana Jones thing. It, it, it was, was like a, kids oh, okay. in the Indiana Jones world, yeah. you know, like going yeah. into this archaeological under, mm -hmm. underground treasure yeah. with maps and whatnot. And uh, <laughs> oh, uh -oh, we lost <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> Kathy ducked out for a sec. <laughs> Kathy had enough of the Goonies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did we get her oh, back? Where did she go? <laughs> she, she left on her own accord. She oh, disappeared. She's right, there she was. Hey, can we talk about something else? <laughs> she said, "Enough of the Goonies." That's uh, like, we're talking can't, about the Goonies. I have to leave. <laughs> cannot handle any more Goonies. <laughs> well, it was a huge hit for Donner, obviously, and people still love this film. There's yeah. a scene where the, the, the that fat kid, the chubby kid, does some kind of dance. <laughs> That kind of a famous famous dance that's oh, showed oh yeah, yeah I don't know what it's yeah. called it's called something so it's just not the, our movie like but Ch his name is Chunk or something Chunk, Chunk. yeah you're doing chunk like Hustle or something yeah I don't know. Exactly. Okay. yeah so uh, but it was a successful film yeah and, a lot of people you know, still talk about it yeah and after that he had this is, we don't have a clip for this film because it didn't download but he did the very you know he did Lethal Weapon which was yeah. huge. Yeah. I Dude. remember that being so fun at the time. I mean, it was kind of Beverly Hills Cop feeling where it was comedic, but it also had that edge of having like that, you know, violent crime angle. 
and you know and of course you know mel gibson is the kind of rogue right. cop you know it was so perfectly cast and that was before mel gibson was exposed to <laughs> right. he is but it was so charming and so fun and and everybody was so great in that movie I was, it's back I was when like, you liked mel gibson it yeah. was sort of like he, yeah. he was you know this actor that did yeah. cool things he was mad max you know right uh, yeah, so it was a, he had a, it was a little bit exotic, I guess, because he was yeah. from Australia. You know, like well, he had yeah, a, he had some cred because he was Mad Max. Yeah. You know, he had an yeah. edge. He, he he still had some humor. Like he was able to be that actor who could do both that great yeah. action and also bring the humor. Like he was really talented that way. Right, and he um, was he's a great director. He'd probably yeah. do some more films. You yeah. know, some, yeah. one of these days. But and I think Donner little... did all the lethal, lethal Weapon films, all four of them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Or, no, maybe not. Maybe I maybe I'm wrong on that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, he did I think he did the first two for sure. Then I think maybe Shane Black came and did a few of them. But um, Oh yeah, he would be good for that. But uh but then after that, after Lethal Weapon, that was a huge hit. He had another huge success with the Christmas movie starring Bill Murray. Right. My personal favorite. I just oh. love this movie. Is like I watch it every year at Christmas. I just to me, it's sort of the anti-Christmas Christmas movie that still has a little bit of heart, you know. Yeah. And then Karen Allen, oh, she just brings that dewy-eyed, perfect, just great. <laughs> She'd be the the girlfriend everybody would want. You know, she's so perfect. Yeah. And you know, she even throughout the movie, even when he was sort of you know finding his way, she could do way better. I mean, the yeah. guy's an ass, yeah. but <laughs> you know, you kind of wanted to root, you know, lumpy. She called him lumpy, yeah. but uh, I just think this movie is fantastic because this is to me Bill Murray and like just his pinnacle best. Bill Murray, yeah. Bill Murray is oh. always good. Bill Murray is always so good. Ah, oh, so let's see a clip of Bill Murray let's doing see a this clip thing. Of Scrooge. Mm -hmm. You're hitting me, Frank, but take it easy on the Bacardi. <laughs> 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 it goes back in. <laughs> to old times, my friend. <laughs> He's all expressions here. So funny. Oh my God. <laughs> it's Lou Hayward, your old boss, your best friend. But you're. <laughs> dead. Seven years. <laughs> Been that long? Geez, I, I mean, to look at you, I wouldn't have guessed more than <laughs> three tops. Oh, Frank, <laughs> Frank, you are in trouble, big trouble. All right, let's just say, for argument's sake, that you're right, that I am in big trouble. What exactly would that mean? Look at me, look at your future. <laughs> now, if you don't change your ways, you're gonna wind up doomed, just as I am. <laughs> <laughs> One minute. I'm on the 14th hole at Wingfoot, lining up a putt. A heart attack later, I'm a worm feast. No, 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 no. You're not a worm feast. You're a hallucination brought on by alcohol, Russian vodka poisoned by Chernobyl. <laughs> under a lot of pressure lately, I've been putting on a big silence. <laughs> Out. I had it all. Ooh. I was a captain of industry. Feared by men, <laughs> adored by women. Ah, adored? Let's be honest, Lou. You paid for the women. I'm warning you, Frank. Don't waste your life as I did mine. But waste? How can you say that? You're a legend in this business. You're the man who invented the miniseries. Mankind should have been my business. Charity, mercy, kindness. That should have been my business. Don't wait. Get yourself involved. Now, it's too late for me, but it's not for you. You can be saved. <laughs> so good. That's uh, you know, if you can hear uh, the, the voice of John Forsyth, yeah, who played Lou Hayward, who of course was you know Charlie from Charlie's Angels, like, among yeah. other things. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's just a great scene. Yeah, it's basically the Christmas Carol. You know, it's, yeah. it's basically you know the retelling that's a classic story. I mean, I always love this story anyway. I love the idea of your past, present, and future coming back. You know, learning right. your lessons. Yeah, yeah, Bill Murray to the mix and Bobcat Goldthwait. It's the really sad, you know, employee that he abused. Um, he plays like this, this uh, really top, 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 like marketing executive in television. He's going to put on this live broadcast of the Christmas Carol and it all goes awry basically because he's right. being visited by these ghosts. But it's like the way he, the way they portray the marketing business is so accurate, <laughs> even in it's like over the topness. 
you know, where he's asking employees to stay late on Christmas Eve, like just yeah. terrible employee <laughs> practices. That happens. And then just Bill yeah. Murray just being such an asshole. You know, my other favorite scene, which is also great, was where he goes to the restaurant and he's starting to see these ghosts appearing and he, he's yeah. looking like the almost like William Shatner with the the guy, yeah. the ghost on the, so he thinks he's seeing things and people reacting to him acting like a crazy person because he's seeing things that aren't there. Just, he's so good at that expression, that disbelief. Yeah. I mean, it just, I just love this movie. Yeah. Same guy did the omen people. <laughs> yeah. And you know what, going back even further, I, I, I don't want to not mention this before we end the podcast, but there was a show um, that I remember. I don't know why I remember it so well, but it, it from my early, early, early childhood memories of watching the Banana Split show. Yeah, that's right. And they used to have these little segments on the Banana Split show. It was like some of them were cartoons and some were live action. And one of the live action ones was called Danger Island. Yeah. And it was... To my eyes, when I was a kid, it seemed like a movie. It was it was on an island, and it was about these people that were being chased by these evil, you know, the pirates and all that kind of stuff, and treasure. And um, there was this shout, you know, the guy would go, "Uh oh, Chongo!" really loud, and then you'd hear this guy up in the trees, like, da -da 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 -da, and he'd come swinging out on the rope, you know. <laughs> and it was like, to me, that was so cool, and. I didn't know this until I got older and started being aware of such things. But Richard Donner directed all of those episodes. Crazy. And they were all really short. You can find them. I think you can find them on YouTube now. Oh. You know, you'll watch you'll watch maybe half of one episode and you'll have you'll have all <laughs> you imagine. need. Yeah. You'll Watching have all you these. need. The the opening credits kind of tell you everything you need to know and you're you're like, Okay, I don't need to see it. But it's it was fun to watch in the afternoon when I was a kid and uh, like back when everything was cartoons for kids it was yeah, like here's yeah. something that's real people running around mm -hmm. on an island and in boats and you know stunts and things like that yeah. it was cool if you watch tv in the early 70s yeah. or mid you, you saw some donner richard donner stuff i i'm yeah. looking at this going, i watched a lot of these shows you know Still watch watching. Shows. people They're forget cool. about a show called yeah. bear cats i remember that yeah show. bear cats <laughs> yeah, it was about these two guys that were in a stutz bear cat you know this old yeah, car hilarious. and they were like you know it was like I remember that show and That's he funny. directed a bunch of those. So it's just really yeah. cool. You know, yes. And we just wanted to do a tribute to Donner on the, yeah. you know, sad, you know, news of his death. And I think everyone can do themselves a favor and pay tribute to Donner themselves by watching one of his movies, because you have a huge catalog of just about yeah. every genre you want. And they're right. all, they all have their charms and, yeah. you know, it's, it's definitely worth just checking him out again because he's just all about entertainment. They are just entertaining. They're yeah. just, even when they're being scary, it's just such a great grasp of what is entertaining in a big event film. And great. if you don't like the genre stuff, try a 1980 film called Inside Moves. It's a drama, mm -hmm. it's a yeah. family drama and they, around basketball or something, but it's really yeah. good with David Morris. Great. That's a really good film too. So John Savage. So, so yeah, Richard Donner, a great yeah. career, you know, yep. an absolute iconic yeah. film director, Hollywood yeah. film director. I, think I wish we most... had our whiskey. It'd be like, here's one for you, Donner. Yeah. His <laughs> most iconically uh, Cinemondo film is The Omen for me. And I think, yeah. I'm, right. I think after talking about it and watching that scene, I'm like, you know, I haven't, I haven't seen that in, gosh, it's probably been three weeks. I need to I'm see it. I'm actually kind of surprised <laughs> that he didn't do more because he didn't do much horror after that, even though I feel like he did one of the best horror films ever yeah. made. He didn't really pursue it after that. So I guess it just wasn't his jam ultimately. But he did build a beautiful, epic film, you know, A-list film around that. But then he went on to do a little bit lighter, you know, entertainment Mostly. Some of the some of the best horror films. Look at William Friedkin. He never yeah. really did a horror film yeah. again. And even so Roman weird. Polanski, who did Rosemary's sure. Baby, he didn't do any legit yeah. horror type films. I mean, the Tenet, but the Tenet, the, um, and Delirious. Is that what's called? Delirious. Delusion. Delusion. Yeah. Delusion. No, no, okay. not delusion. Not delusion. Repulsion. What's it Repulsion. 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 But, yeah. And then There's what was a... the one on the boat? Knife oh, yeah. in the water. He's sort of genre esque, but not necessarily horror. Thrillers, like sort of thrillers, kind of yeah. Thrillers, but that was a yeah. supernatural horror, you know. But his movies aren't nearly as entertaining or funny as uh, <laughs> Donner's films. Yeah, <laughs> they're different filmmakers. They are definitely very different. But the Omen isn't. The filmmaker. Omen doesn't have any funny. You know, there's uh, there's no. not really any funny in that film. That's a grim, seventies gritty, yeah. you know, 
yeah. dark, darkly. And it was one of those religion films that were big yeah. in the 70s where they yeah. where they sort of seriously and yeah. with depth went into the, the, you know, the Catholicism, the fear and the, 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 the darkness of some of that, you know, yeah. the, the, you know, if you believe in it, then you also believe in demons. And yeah, here's I mean, they what would show are. like a passage from the Bible and then show part of the films like, see, it's real. This is what it would be if it was <laughs> this true. This is going to happen. <laughs> this is what you need to be afraid of if you believe yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, we highly recommend The Omen. You know, I highly recommend Scrooge when Christmas time comes around. That's the best yeah. time to watch that. You know, just, just pick one. <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Great. Well, that was fun to, yeah. to take a look back at a great director. And don't forget to, you know, like, comment, and subscribe yeah. to our podcast, our YouTube channel. And please let us know what you'd like us to talk about. If there's yeah. filmmakers out there, please let us We're know. Up for six. Up Oops, for suggestions sorry. was I going to say <laughs> until I get assaulted by this graphic. What were you, what were you going to say? <laughs> no. Don't don't no. fall for it, Kathy. For it. <laughs> no. What no. was that again? No. Don't step in the same puddle again. <laughs> I don't want to make it happen again. <laughs> All right. See you guys next time. Yeah, take care. Thanks for listening and watching. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Bye.